Chapter 25 I reflected often upon my first kill, as they say. I thought about Anne Hendricks and the boy whose fear I subtracted in the secret garden away from the city, her atrocities and exhilarations, her toxins, searching myself for the answer to certain complexities of my life. The hunger which struck me as I approached the boy bothered me most, being overpowered by that craving. In my mind, I saw life boiled down to simplicity, but my thoughts were not my experience. Hadn't I acted outside of my intentions and choices? Hadn't I been under the spell of this hunger? Was the violence it perpetrated my inheritance too? These thoughts disturbed me. Bless said many of them do not survive our subtle interventions, especially those who fully identify with the fear. Without fear, who are they, she asked rhetorically. They cease to be. So what if the boy had died in the process, I asked. So what? That would make me a murderer, a killer. She looked at me, perplexed. I guess, if you want to look at it that way. She shrugged her shoulders. I could tell she thought I was a drama queen. Unbelievable. Dare I accuse my own sister of callousness? Well, she could follow my thoughts, and by the way she went quiet, I could see I hurt her feelings. So then she had not a callous heart? Could both states exist like flip sides of a coin? Here is when I realized on a deeper level our own true nature, deluxe, and our helplessness to it. Nothing could be done about this craving for the fear. Surely I might steal my will against misdeeds, but to follow a course against one's own nature was to steer into the wind and end up in irons or capsized. The salve was faith. This violence could only be accepted as a means to a greater good, the eradication of fear initiative. Similar battles were ongoing in scientific communities, were they not? Chemists and biologists and doctors working together to kill off cancer. Chemotherapy and radiation were nothing if not violent. Many lives were lost to the toxicity, and many were saved. The processes were aligned with the best of intentions. Coming to this conclusion at this moment in time, I could not only feel the light clarify as I took each step deep breath of the aromatic dream, but also see how I might, like the reflecting pond in the amphitheater of roses, take only some and give away the rest of that refracted light out of the corners of the earth where it was most needed. The darkest places among the shadowed eternities of East and West Oakland.